Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome back to the end of Planar Crossroads, and as always, welcome back to our Round the Hearth discussions. This time, we are discussing Seeds of Adventure, which is kind of a, a fun way for us to say farming sim type of stuff. So, since we're in January Jaunt, which is about kind of slice of life things. So, we hope you're ready for that. We have some examples on, for both a mundane, absurd, and fantastical, as well as some system recommendations. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and do our announcements. So, I am Adam L. Spain with the Interplanar Crossroads. Uh, wait, wait, last time I said Avenue oh. could go first. Oh, we're switching it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, everybody. It's Dan from Avenue Studios. You can find us on Rumble, YouTube, and anywhere you listen to podcasts. And of course, during these theme collaborations with the Interplanar Crossroads, we will be building and running a one-shot on our channel based off of the discussions we have here on Around the Hearth. So uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern, the first Thursday of the month, we or the second Thursday of the month, there it is, <laughs> we build it, and the fourth Thursday of the month, we run it. So join us for that, and of course, if you become a supporter, you can get in on that live game and play with myself and Adam and Jacob, whoever's showing up for that game. It's always a lot of fun. Highly recommend checking out the ones we've already done. And um, our other big thing is that we have launched, as of posting these videos, we will have launched... Well, no, I'm sorry. We will have announced, mm -hmm. because wibbly wobbly time <laughs> i gotta remember where we are <laughs> we will have um announced our kingmaker west march style game in our discord so all of our supporters get to be involved in a uh west march game in the pathfinder kingmaker series fully integrated on foundry virtual tabletop i'm very excited for this jacob will be the lead gm in it and we'll be running a bunch of games play by posts uh, there'll be some farming slice of life <laughs> in there in the play by post because it is Kingmaker and it's a ton of fun. So do join us for that. I'm really looking forward to it and I'm excited to talk about farming sims. <laughs> All right. Adam and I both have farming in our blood. So <laughs> yeah, farming, ranch, and stuff like that. Well, I am Adam L. Spain with the end of Planar Crossroads. And as far as announcements for us, we have hopefully continued to be able to do our Mondays live at 11 with kind of some streaming of usually doodling and discussing and kind of uh, it's meant to be a, a stream where I can discuss things I'm creating and making with y'all and maybe behind the scenes type of things and such like that. So you can tune into those if you'd like. Also, I've started a... I have revitalized, I should say, a channel I had done before, which is The Gentle Voice, which does ministry type of videos, if you want to check those out. Those are on YouTube and Rumble. Most I'll have the videos on Rumble also. So you can check those out. Um, I don't think there's a lot of announcements right now. Uh, aside from mentioning that if all goes to plan, we're recording in December, if all goes to plan, I should have finished editing all of the discussions we did on faith and gaming, at least up to this point. So next we'll be releasing them. Hopefully it'll be like a January, February, March, April type of thing. Maybe closer to each other. We'll see how things go. Uh, but that's what I've got there don't think there's anything else so i guess we're done with announcements as far as uh getting into our chat we can't do that until we do levi spotlight right because levi mm -hmm. he may not be here in body well he definitely wasn't here in body he may not be here in <laughs> voice but he's here in spirit perhaps so we are doing levi spotlight and we are spotlighting the Dungeon Minister. Dun, dun, dun. So, you can check him out there. Uh, I didn't say last time. He is at 1.82k right now from the date of our recording. So, if you want to check him out, let's try to get him up to 2k subs. How about oh, that? Yeah. Think we can think we can manage that? Lord willing? Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Alright. So that's a quick shout out for him check him out and then i guess that's 
our announcements done. That's our shout out done. Now it's time to grab your preferred beverage, pull up a seat by the hearth in this cool January, and join us as we discuss Seeds of Adventure. Skull. Skull. Okie dokie. So let me see about it. <laughs> I forgot to look at what time we started. We didn't jabber <laughs> that much. So, okay. I try to keep us on time. We're staying pretty well on time in the last one. So, at least from my <laughs> guess. So, Seeds of Adventure. We, just like last time in our last discussion about school games and school drama games, we want to start with some examples for mundane, absurd, and fantastical, and then move into, uh, and then mention some systems that we think would be good, and then go into discussion. So, as far as the mundane for Seeds of Adventure, you can look at, as far as something literary, Little House on the Prairie, Little House in the Big Woods. Those are just really good for those farming, homesteady type of games. Uh, and they, you can have a lot of fun with those. There's also, as far as kingdom building ones, there's, there is Kingmaker, but you can take some hints maybe from, uh, other games like Catan and just mm. increase the role play and have that role play influence tokens and stuff like mm. that. Mm -hmm. That's mainly one to take influence from. The Sims, they have expansions for this type of thing and they're usually pretty, they're usually mundane in some ways so you can kind of take a few checks from those and then there's also something on a more dramatic side with yellowstone that's a uh, i think it's a amazon prime show or something uh, but they released some of it on terrestrial services so you can check that out too and that's about ranching and stuff like that so all of those are useful you might have noticed a theme that, uh, as was brought up last time, Westerns, Pioneer Days, and that type of era is rife and ripe with examples and potential for games. So mm. check those out as far as for Seeds of Adventure homesteady type of games. Even if you don't want to, uh, even if you're not wanting to play a game where you're farming you could be ranching, and that still takes a lot of effort and a lot of stuff. You're going to be a cowboy. Well, you got to run the cows. Mm -hmm. So there's that to think about. If you want to verge more into the absurd, you can look at the har uh, early Harvest Moon games, as well as what come af came after them by the same similar creator team, uh, Song of the Seasons. Those have a lot less, a lot lower levels of any kind of fantastical elements. Mm. There are some there, but the main play of it, the main game of it is not so fantastical. You get more fantastical when you go into something like Stardew Valley. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, Stardew Valley, the first part of the game starts out kind of a little absurd, but not a little in the absurd, but not full on fantastical. But by the time you're slicing apart uh, slimes down in the caves and fighting mummies in the desert to get some of their crafting material and dragons in the desert to get their mat crafting material, you've you've ventured into the uh, you've you've left the absurd and ventured into the fantastical. Except especially when you can find a dino egg and hatch it and raise dinos. So. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. No, no. <laughs> but you have. And then Slime Rancher is one that people are mm -hmm. probably thinking of. Uh, I found one online, Coral Island. Uh, that's another one that has like mer people in it. So you're mm -hmm. there by the shore. So you have this kind of trade back and forth might be useful for your inspi inspiring your game. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of settlement building type of stuff in this type of a game, in this type of a homesteady game. Uh, I think Josh mentioned, Josh from Copper Dragon Games had mentioned how he was having things in his setting progress with a settlement by the sea and how there was a mm. mer, there was that merfolk presence. And so there was going to be trade back and forth, possibly depending on people's roles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So those are things, those are some inspirational points. 
And then as far as some systems that would be good, uh, mm. Kane had suggested Powered by the Apocalypse, Fate, and then something like Wander Home. Uh, those are there for those interested in those type of games. We also think that uh, something like Miles Ritter might be useful if you don't, uh, you can kind of switch around whether it's a mouse or not, but you could use that. You can use EZD6 for mm. some of the adventure parts. Um, and feel free. We also suggest Open Legend. I think Open Legend is a really good system because of how interpretive the roles are and how narrative the roles are. You can still work with that. Mm -hmm. So there's that. I actually wouldn't recommend Fiasco with this unless you are going to do something to resolve conflict that's physical in another way. Because you can mm. use Fiasco, but it is much more a storytelling type of game. And it's it's just meant to be that way. It's just how mm. it's how its function is. So those are some that I would suggest or that have been suggested. So mm. now general discussion. <laughs> oh man, I have a ton of thoughts. I'll start with um, one thing I'd thrown out that uh, I'd had a chat with somebody in the Open Legend Discord too. They were thinking about how to handle a castle castle building and stuff like that. And uh, one of the easiest thoughts I had on it, and uh, I haven't heard how it went, but the person I was talking with was really excited to try it, is just giving the castle its own character sheet. And as you're mm -hmm. the leveling up, is representative of what's happening with the castle and how it's growing. So I just want to shout Open Legend out. Could be on the surface you wouldn't think you could do a lot with it in this vein, I think, naturally, just because it was built for heroic play. But actually just doing stuff like that because it's so easily interpreted. You could have a lot of fun if your farm or your castle or whatever you're building is, is a character itself that you're trying to level up. Mm -hmm. Which I, th I think generally could work for... A lot of systems. Oh, and just on the systems again, I was thinking because um, Jake Jacob does uh, uses organic towns uh, to run and build towns, and he has his players building settlements by using that additional uh, rule set. So I would definitely recommend checking out organic towns if you're like in Pathfinder. I think it's good for Pathfinder and D D and D, mm -hmm. but if you're wanting to stick within that, oh, actually, I think it's. Setting uh, system agnostic, I think it's its own thing. Organic towns, um, really good one to check out to have to give you a rule set for building it up because you can get settlement points, you can earn settlement points to expand. So it's kind of all set there, really nicely, and it has a nice range of how much like you can use parts of it or use all of it, and it it's, won't be broken um, regardless of how much of the rules you use. Um, so that's really good. And then uh, my last one was the Battle Zoo Bestiary, which is for D&D &D or Pathfinder if you're wanting to have resource collecting from like monsters or easily could be reflavored to be more realistic and just harvesting from animals, husbandry and hunting and all that stuff. That would be a nice additional rule set to check out. Mm. Um, so. I, that does bring up the idea of not being afraid to mix up your your rule sets mm. if you're wanting to do this. Um, right. I like Into the Weird for mine. Oh, yes. Yeah. Into the Weird and Wild, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, because it talks about hunting different things and moon cycles, which are really important. Uh, I think that uh, one of the things you can do to spice up your your game is not even you don't even have to get outside of the mundane but have planting during certain times make them it make it important go back to mm. an old almanac or something and say oh, yeah because you can look at the, the farmer's almanacs just pick up one pick up a farmer's almanac and just use it verbatim on what it says you know mm. and and you can even pick them up there's backdated ones so that so, so, so that your players can kind of sneak a peek at what's coming up in the future, you just use a backdated one and say, like, no, this one's from 1926. This one's from 18... whatever. I don't... I think they had some 18... I don't know how far back they go. But they do go mm -hmm. back a long ways. 
Mm-hmm. So planting by the cycles and stuff like that makes a big difference. Right. So what are you going to do? You're going to change this or that. How are you going mm-hmm. to do that? How your and your roles will affect how well that turns out. Um, and by mixing, uh, if you want to mix in systems, we just did from when we're recording this our Neolithic November, which mm. was we were level zero. But we were going right. and having this adventure. Uh, and depending on how well you roll, you could uh, you could be quite a powerful level zero, or you can just be Paul Caw, who's not particularly <laughs> good. At He's old, okay? He's probably 30-something. Yeah. What do you expect? <laughs> so, um, I would say that if you're going to mix up systems, you can mix in something like Easy D6 if you want to handle some combat pretty quickly, but then have the rest be done with something a bit more narrative. Or you can, I believe that Sagas from Dennis, he oh, yes. says it can handle anything, so you yes, can always give it a shot. Out. You can always give it a shot. Yep. Uh, so that those one- are options. Yeah, sagas could be interesting to mix in because it's a low roll uh, system. So that could be interesting if you wanted to use that for something specific or just as a whole. Uh, yeah, uh, we should ask him if he's done any kind of sims with sagas. Mm-hmm. Oh, try and break the system. He tells everyone to try and do it. Yeah. <laughs> no one succeeded yet. So those are optional. Uh, I do think low levels yeah. work better for these type of games especially if you start level zero Mm -hmm. um and that's a lot easier to do in open legend because while there are levels in open legend everything is actually dictated your power is actually dictated by experience points not by it's it's more dictated by how many experience points you have not what level you are that's just an easy way to to power to gauge power so you can actually say each session you earn one experience until you reach level one and you start with zero so you're at level zero you can give Mm. them like half points or something we talked about that Mm -hmm. Um, and when you were talking about doing something with the with the character sheet being for the town Mm. Or the the castle you said, but I was thinking like, oh, you could just shift that to a town and make it smaller to sure. scale, right? Uh, the town or your farm, if you want to go real small scale, your farm mm-hmm. or your ranch, your homestead has this character sheet, and you are doing things to uh, update that character sheet. Um, that's very similar to what we were talking about with our mech game, where mm. the mech was the thing that you were powering up, and you were a team working on the mech. Same idea, but on the homestead. Mm-hmm. Right. So, those are options. Also, this gives you a chance to play family drama, too. Because mm. most of the stuff that's going to go on on a homestead game, on a adventure game like this, where you are involved, is either going to be directly with the family, or your neighbor, your close neighbors... Or if you live close enough to town like you do in Stardew Valley, you can do like this small town. You are you don't have to have a huge cast of characters to play this type of game and still make it fun. You, ha- mm-hmm. you can have... Uh, it's very much like the school game. There's a small cast of characters in a school game that we talked about last time. There's right. a small cast of characters in a homesteady type of sim game also. So Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Even if you do have a small town, it's, you know, the the bar owner, the bartender, there's the shopkeep, there's the sheriff. They're they're the pillars that you always come to rely and expect to be there. Um, I was thinking too, we've been talking a lot like western and medieval and fantasy, but <clears throat> I was just thinking about Fallout Shelter for mm-hmm. in, inspiration too and uh colonizing a planet or some kind of terraforming uh, you could easily translate this to a different plan, which I guess Stardew Valley does kind of do that, right? I haven't played it, I just know it. Well, Stardew Valley is uh, it, it, it's modern day, so 
You know, okay. nothing crazy. Actually, a little in the past based upon the tech. There's no cell ah, phones. Ah, gotcha. So. I didn't know that. That's fun. It looks like fun. I've seen Addy play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you could totally set this in a sci-fi setting, too. The same kind of thing. Um, and all the same rules apply. Mm-hmm. Um, which kind of fit when we talked about Westerns, how there's that connection between space and the wild frontier of space versus the wild frontier and the wild west and mm. um yeah that could be a lot of fun too i can't remember there was a video game i played like 20 years ago <laughs> uh, an original playstation and it was an awesome sim space game but those those can be a lot of fun and it does give you a little flexibility where you can just make stuff up yeah the same as the fantastical right the sci-fi you can just kind of make up technology if you want depending on how hardcore you want to be with it yeah we talked uh, about this in this in uh july sci-fi sci- where most yes. sci-fi is actually sci fantasy it's not really sci-fi right so, <laughs> you can do that you can have fun with it mm-hmm. how are we going to terraform this planet don't worry about it science <laughs> So you just use you just replace magic with science and you you figure it out. Done. <laughs> so uh, that's what those are some some fun things you can do. I was thinking also that when you're making these characters up, just like they have to be directly important in your your students' uh, lives, they're directly involved and af- and affect your students' lives in the school game these people need to be directly involved with and affecting the life of your homestead too your homesteady mm. sim type of game and even more so because it's not just your grades that depend on it in this one it's your life and livelihood that depend right. on the relationships you're building with your neighbors and community in this game so Taking it very, it's a very, it can be a very serious thing, but you can also have a lot of fun with it. It's very much like life. That's why it's a slice of life sim, a slice of life month. This is a great one to talk about because you are right. building up life. You're playing the game of life in this. So, yeah, especially if you're doing more of a hand hand to mouth sort of existence, like any disruption. It's serious. You can't just go to the grocery store. <laughs> if the crop goes bad, you might not make it. That, which would be a serious way to take it. You can do very lighthearted, like we're talking with Slime Rancher or something like that. <laughs> um, but you could also play this really serious. I think I wanted to throw out, too, on the flip side of doing very personal homesteading, the, the idea of also really going, stepping outside and doing more of a sim um, which could fit with what we were talking about, making a character sheet for the town or something, if you're trying to simulate that. So each stat within your character sheet represents a portion of the town or the farming uh, community you're in or w- whatever you're simulating. Mm-hmm. The um, the outpost on the moon or Mars or something. And so you're not playing a specific character. You're actually, as the party, you're playing the town. Mm-hmm. And trying to build and expand that, and that that could be a lot of fun. It's it's a very different, very different kind of fun. But that would be another way I think you could take this and have a lot of fun, where everyone's rolling different stats for the town, and that's representing a certain amount of people. And then you could have fun with part of the sessions are building out. Well, who are these people? And starting to have some player connections to these people in the town that are technically they're playing all the NPCs. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that could be a lot of fun too. Again, we have we didn't say it last time, but it's it's always understood the session zero and talking and seeing what everybody wants to do, but um, mm. just to prevent present another possible way of doing a simulation that could be a lot of fun, but a little more removed from specific characters. Right, and these type of things work really well for what I'll call young settings. Young settings Mm. in the sense of, you don't know what's in this part of the world. Let your players figure it out for you type of thing. Or you know what's in this part of the world, but it hasn't been fully fleshed out yet. Well, let your players help you. And Mm. if you then suddenly make them all the town, well, then you have this nice, this will get really fleshed out. 
uh, because you have several minds working on it, not just your own. Right. Uh, yes. The, the Kingmaker game is like that, but you still have right. your individual characters. Well, if you just did away with the individual characters, you can say, okay, your – let's take Open Legend. So your might score is represented by the town guard. Mm-hmm. But he also represents your something else. If, if it's a really small settlement, everybody's got to take double duty and no one can specialize. So all of these zero level characters, you spread out their stats and then whoever has those stats is the person who rolls for them and don't allow a lot of, uh, a lot of overlap. Uh, right. When you, when you, when you and the players make up these NPCs. When you and the players make up these NPCs, don't allow a lot of overlap. Say, we need someone to guard. Okay, they are the they are the might, the fortitude, and maybe the will or something like that. Or, you know, something uh, protection. Mm-hmm. The protection too, if you want to have a little right. bit of a fantasy element, you can do that. Well, who's the mayor then? Well, he's going to have influence. He's going to have will. He's going to be, you know, doing those things. Well, that's all nice and good, but who's going to take care of the the healing and who's going to take care of the raising of the farm animals and who's going to take care of this and that. And all of a sudden, they, let's say they have five fam, five, you can say families, you can say factions, you can say individuals. It's up to you on how big you want your town to be, but mm-hmm. the town gets the character sheet and you can make notes on the, you can either color code it or make notes on this character or this group, if you want to do it that way, if it's a large town, is responsible for this. And this is the, the best stat from that group or that person for this thing. So might to the guards and such. And once you have that correlated over there, all of a sudden there's this interactive character sheet that the players can be like, okay, and you can kind of keep a, a, a timeline. So you have your kind of sim element for this slice of life. You can keep a timeline of things that are going to happen along this Mm -hmm. however wide of a timeline you want. It can be a year. It can be a month. It can be a week. It it could be this, those type of timelines. Mm -hmm. And as you've established that timeline, and this is really good for real world time equals got time in game. Right. Yeah. I was just thinking that. Because those type of games benefit from the idea of having an easily actionable set of things scheduled. Mm-hmm. So, And it builds in your timer. Because you always want in the game, you want to have that sense of urgency to some extent or another. And so knowing, okay, I was thinking too, in this regard, these, these do really well as play-by-post games too. Because everyone can have time to think. There's lots of time to chat. And if it's a slower type gameplay, you could be like, either you could do one one day real world is one day in the game or some or one week of play by post equals a month of time in game or something like that. Um, very clear, but um, that gives a sense of urgency because time is passing and things happen. Right. And so it's built it's built in, but also very clear for the players. Everyone can easily be on the same page. Right. Which is always nice. <laughs> yeah. We always try. <laughs> All right. We are almost to 30 minutes on the recording. So cool. let's go ahead and see what our final thoughts are. I think last time I made you do final thoughts first. So I'll do final th- thoughts this time. I think you did first too, but you could go again. <laughs> uh, okie dokie. Um, Take us away, Captain. My final thought is um, to build off of what we're talking about. If all of these things co- uh, co- come together to form a game that you want to play with your friends, and if you do that and you are doing it in a way that you're having fun, it doesn't matter how many systems you're adding in or taking out. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in this, it's very easy to get overburdened in a sim game uh, especially if you start adding in a lot of things or if you start thinking about everything that could go wrong so my my 
advice is not to think about every problem that could arise with the crops or every time that an animal might come to get one of the sheep or something mm-hmm. more uh, focus on keynote events. When you decide you need to roll for this, you need to roll for that. If you're taking the town mm-hmm. as its own character type of thing, mm-hmm. do that. And if you do that, you're going to be better able to make these individual roles they're making and decisions they're making feel much more impactful mm-hmm. because no one wants to chase the dog off for the 50 hundredth time from the wild, the wild wolf off the 50 hundredth time from your sheep. You, you just know that this is the first time it's happened, or perhaps this is a very, uh, perhaps the rest of the pack has come this time or something like that. Something is different this time. And so you let those keynote events be what dictate, uh, be your dictator for when you have the characters, the players role for what's happening and how things are going. Um, and if you do it right, this can be something that's played alongside a regular game. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's probably actually my final thought. Rules right into that because um, the bummer. Jacob is running some games for newbies and open legend right now. But <laughs> I wish he was here because he's actually doing just that. He's got his players setting up and running a town separate from the game like it's it's a part of it it's the town they go back to but they're building it and the things they do as characters affect it so it's almost like a mini game inside of the rpg game they're playing um which can be a lot of fun if your characters are or if your players are interested in it um the other thought i was going to throw out in that regard was something like organic towns i just want to shout them out again has some great tables and you can just roll on those tables and i know there's a million you could google too so tables are going to be really helpful uh resource here so you don't have to decide too much and it can have a little bit more random feeling for that struggle to survive um but they have uh, specifically in organic towns they have tables like this event happens so okay we're we're doing a week of time or a month of time here i'm going to roll on one or two tables these are the events that happens just like you're saying adam that are the key events in this time. Um, and that can just be an easy way that you don't have to carry all of this. There's a lot of resources you can use that actually make running it pretty easy. And you're just, you're just adjudicating and kind of playing the lifeguard as the game master, (laughs) rather than having to simulate the entire rest of the world. (laughs) Mm. Not everybody can do that. It's not easy. No. (laughs) Mm. But, yeah, and that's very much influenced from Kingmaker and other yeah. other games that have gone before. They did that. People people look back at the games and they're like, they look at games now and they're like, well, this one's doing this now. And then you look back and it's like, yeah, but they were doing strongholds and stuff like that in, mm. before D&D. They were doing it before those type of games. So there's lots right. you can draw on. There's a whole bunch of resources. Mm-hmm. So don't be afraid to check those out. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid too. I guess I'll tag on at the end is the tables. If you don't, I don't know. There's, I know there's arguments here with this. It depends on how true to dice you like to be, but you roll the dice on the table. To me, it's always an inspiration thing. So I might like exactly what it says, or I don't exactly like it based on what's happening, but it, it gives me a jumping off point for my imagination. It just jumpstarts something for me. <laughs> um, so I always appreciate, it. even if I'm not going to stay true to the table I'm rolling on, it's still a nice springboard, something to get your creative juices flowing in the moment. Right. So. D- decide before you roll. Well, decide two things before you roll. How severe are you going to? So is this going to be an inspiration for you and the players? Mm. Or is this going to be the law of what happens for you and the players on this this hypothetical table we're talking about Mm -hmm. and it's usually better to lean towards it's an inspiration for what's about to happen because we all it's always going to be an inspiration because (laughs) yes (laughs) you then have to flavor that into what's happening right now and what that means for your characters that they're for the characters they're playing Mm -hmm. or the town that they're managing so there is that to think about and then don't put things on the table 
that you don't want to do. <laughs> that's that's don't a good say, way to say it. <laughs> don't say at D100, the volcano explodes, you all die. And complain that you rolled 100 when it's getting really good. And now everybody's <laughs> dead. Like, don't do that. Right. If you don't want the volcano to explode, don't have it on the table that you're rolling on. So um, <laughs> that's just a pointer about tables. If you don't want it to happen, don't put it on the table. <laughs> yes. So that's good. You do have final say. <laughs> All right. Well, that is our brief discussion on Seeds of Adventure, homesteady type of sim games for that and settlements and stuff. So we hope you enjoyed. And uh, if you want more discussions like this, you can check out our Around the Hearth discussions. Um, Dan, where can they find you and such? For our sign up. Oh, absolutely. And we can find us on Rumble where we live stream and then also on YouTube and podcasts. And of course, if you want to support us as well, Patreon Locals gets you access to our private Discord, a ton of bonus content. And very soon, we have already officially announced, but very soon, a Westmarch style game and Pathfinder Kingmaker where our play by post will be a simulation building the kingdoms and whatever our supporters want to get up to inside of the Stolen Lands. So. Hopefully, I'll see you there as well, because it's going to be a blast. All right. Well, there you go. And you can check us out there, too. You can check us out on Facebook. YouTube. You can check us out on YouTube or Rumble. In a Plane of Crossroads is also on BitChute. If you want to see some ministry stuff, that's over on The Gentle Voice on YouTube and Rumble. And I think that's everything. So, as always, have a great day. God bless and enjoy. Bye. Bye. This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you. Oh, that one went all right. Beautiful. Had some stuff for that one. I'm excited. I'm excited for the West March thing. I hope people will enjoy it. Should be fun. And it should be This is just it's making me think of it, all this stuff we're talking mm-hmm. about. <laughs> well, it should be fun and it should be something that's manageable as well. Mm-hmm. Since it's going to be long term type of this happens, now we're going to react and it's gonna be thought out and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, Jake and I have multiple meetings. He's, we're trying to, it's exactly what we were just talking about. We're trying to plan like book one, we're going to do over a year. So we know exactly what points on the calendar we're going to hit the story events. And oh, nice. Clear goals, mm-hmm. which also will allow us to decide, you know, is it, be, is it successful? I hope so. Cause I think people are enjoying the adventure by vote. I've been really enjoying seeing yeah. everyone voting on that. <laughs> yep. Uh, I can't wait for the video stuff to come out of that. Ah, costumes <laughs> are coming in as we speak. I think more are coming tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah. We'll see. I hope people enjoy it. Lord willing, right? I mean, I'll have fun with it. So Good. <laughs> Lord willing. Uh, All right. Let me check this one. Sounds good.